So talking about Venus-Jupiter conjunction, this brings together the pleasure-seeking and happiness of Venus with the abstract belief and hope of Jupiter. It's easy to say this is good, 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 but there's actually a lot of complexity and subtlety here. These two planets are both teachers, but they teach very different things. So check it out. So talking about Venus-Jupiter conjunction and when these two planets join and come together. So Jupiter is that energy that connects us to something higher where we look for inspiration and purpose and those philosophies that we believe in. Those are the things that we follow in our life. that guide us toward sort of redemption. They, they inspire us when life kicks us to the curb. We have some philosophy. Well, at least there's this. Or In a traditional sense, it takes the form of religion and some sort of belief. Um, in a more abstract sense, it's you know something that you might call spiritual or spirituality. Although spirituality is such a misused term um, because the things we believe in might not be that spiritual at all. Atheism is a belief. People believe that. That's their philosophy. So you want to understand Jupiter is just really what we believe. What we believe in that gives us hope. And again, you probably have heard me say these things before, but all kinds of philosophies are related to Jupiter. Even ones like, you know, white supremacy or you know, racism or even, you know, sexism, misogyny. It's literally the beliefs that we have about things. So we can have a belief that's kind of an ultimate belief like religion, which is kind of encompassing other beliefs. But then we also have beliefs about work and a belief about money and a belief about, let's say, men or women or anything. We have beliefs about them. And that's actually what Jupiter is. It's that realm of belief and the source of those beliefs, which are usually some sort of teacher or teaching or something that, again, that taught us something. So our capacity to really extract the pure teaching and to find a good belief that's actually worth believing in rather than that's kind of keeping us going nowhere is what Jupiter is. And Venus is that quality of beauty, enjoyment, pleasure, happiness, and it's very worldly. Uh, you know, Jupiter is actually, you know, quite otherworldly, again, because it's abstract. We believe things, but they, they sort of, you know, they sort of clunk around somewhere in our head. They're very important because we follow those beliefs, but the beliefs themselves, it's a very abstract process. Venus, on the other hand, is very literal. And on some level, we want pleasure and happiness. You know, again, happiness sounds abstract. Well, how do we find happiness? Who knows? Well, we do know a lot of what we find happy, you know, of what happiness is. First, it's the form of pleasure. The first, the easiest way for you to be happy is to do something where you get pleasure right now. Pleasure is for yourself. Food, sex, you know, chocolate, you know, but then we also want to share that if it's just all about my pleasure, then it's unfulfilling. We want to share that pleasure. When we share pleasure, it actually creates happiness because pleasure and happiness are different. Right? Pleasure is just for me. It doesn't really make us happy. And we learn that pretty quickly. Happiness comes from something outside of ourselves, usually with another person or another creature. Like, it doesn't have to be another person, but even, you know, having a dog or a cat makes you happy. It doesn't give you pleasure, probably not. But happiness is really connected to other beings and of course the sort of culmination of that is a like a romantic relationship. But all people that we surround ourselves with, we want to be around people that make us happy. It's pretty simple but it's also quite complex and it's important to understand this evolution. But then we have something that's higher than happiness because again if we're just, if our 
happiness is conditional on other people or other beings. Well, they die, they leave us, they change. Of course, the dog doesn't. The dog loves us and we can count on the love of the dog. The cat, most of the time. <laughs> no, cats also make us happy and they also share affection. But if it's conditioned on other beings, then there's stress involved with it. Even with the dog that makes us happy, one day the dog's going to die. Or there's also stress created with it. But so things that are above happiness, that's related to other beings, are things that are, you know, the source of happiness. And that takes the form of beauty, which is the abstract quality of Venus. The abstract quality of Venus is beauty and bliss and things that we generate that where we don't need any source of, you know, sensual, you know, pleasure or emotional happiness with another being. The source of all of that is, is ourself. We're the source of it. Those other things just connect us to it. And so we find that in things like, literally like in, you know, something like nature, sometimes art or other things. Art is more of a man-made, you know, happiness thing, but it also can really connect us with the bliss of the soul. But the highest function of that is, you know, the beauty that we find in God and in spirituality as well. You know, the truth is all of the planets lead to a source of spirituality. That's why that word is so misused. Because all the planets have a connection to spirituality. They all unite there. And so that highest quality of Venus is actually devotion and being able to generate that bliss of the soul, not the happiness of other beings or the pleasure that I get for myself. So when Venus and Jupiter join, it actually connects these two energies, at least in potential. Everything is potentiality in astrology. Nothing is absolute. This is one of those things you know, astrology students and astrologers also, not just students, have to always come back to. Nothing is infinite or ultimate. There's always a dialectic going on with any planet that's powerful or weak. It's always a range of possibilities. And so with Venus and Jupiter, the range of possibilities is to actually really kind of unite those two energies where the things that inspire us and that motivate us and that connect us to our highest self, which is Jupiter, and that purpose is something that's beautiful and where we're devoted to it and where we feel that bliss of the soul when we're connected with that guru. This is why Venus is exalted in Jupiter's sign because it elevates that sensual worldly quality of Venus, which wants worldly happiness and pleasure through the senses and other people, and it connects it with something abstract and otherworldly, which is what Jupiter is, that thing beyond this world. But it's a very high standard. It's a very high goal. And what happens most often is they interrupt each other. All planetary conjunctions are interruptions. They're, all planets are functional enemies when they're joined. Even if they support certain things, like Venus and Jupiter both support finding that high thing because they're both teachers, they're both givers, they're both natural benefics. But in trying to find that, we find we also have to encounter where we are because we're not in it yet. We're trying, we're aspiring to it. And so Jupiter's influence on Venus creates disappointment with the relationship you might have or with your happiness, with your pleasure, with other people. And Venus's influence on Jupiter brings that, oh, this is what inspires me. It brings it down from that abstract realm into that literal realm where you need to connect those teachings and that hope and inspiration with other people or where sensual enjoyments and all of the, let's say, pleasures of the flesh and temptations of the world pull you down from that state of kind of ecstasy on some level. You know, 
Jupiter has that quality. It's not necessarily ecstasy. It is when it's combined with Venus, though. It actually can be that like, ecstatic love of God. But again, Jupiter is all these principles and philosophies and dogma, often, that's disconnected from the reality. That's why you see people preach all these things. But then, in reality, especially when they start having to deal with other people, they fall short. We fall short of our teachings. So the influence of Venus on Jupiter is where we can tend to fall short of our teachings when we're trying to put them into practice with other people or our own, you know, sensual world. And the influence of Jupiter on Venus is where those things that maybe even made us happy, even those relationships that we had with other people, our romantic relationships and other relationships with, you know, our friends or whatever, we realize the difference because we're trying to make those things something bigger and they're not. So we feel that disappointment. One of the big characteristics of Jupiter is actually disappointment that I talk about a lot. But the disappointment is, again, it's a stage. It's not an ultimate thing. So you should always get out, you should get out of this idea that thinking any stage is a permanent state. There are states and stages. Disappointment isn't an end in itself. It's actually a catalyst for something else. Disappointment in our relationship or how we're relating with other people or people in our life is a catalyst for us to both do it better, maybe find a relationship that's the next level where we also evaluate our interactions with others and see where we can improve it. Everything is a stage. So this is the relationship that Venus and Jupiter have. And ultimately it's to, it's to elevate both our relationships with others and to allow us to put our teachings into practice in the, in the tangible world. You know, you see where preachers, you know, the classic example that I kind of use with Venus and Jupiter is when you see these, you know, ministers and preachers having a kind of sex scandal or something, right? A sort of sex scandal really brings all that, you know, I, love of God, you shouldn't sin, blah, blah, but I've given into the temptations of the flesh and all this, right? And, you know, Venus Jupiter a lot is that kind of soulmate fantasy getting destroyed from the other side. So one brings the sort of preacher and the dogma down to earth, and the other one shatters that soulmate fantasy. It also drives the soulmate fantasy. So when someone has these two planets joined, like Jupiter Venus joined in the natal chart, there can often be this like soulmate fantasy. And then any human being that you measure against the soulmate fantasy is going to be a disappointment. The soulmate fantasy is trying to connect God with another person. Not, another person is not God. We're all divine beings, but I mean, they're not the God in you. you. You have to connect your heart with the cosmic source. That only can be done by you. No external human being is going to fulfill that. And again, the Venus Jupiter is often the kind of soulmate fantasy crashing to Earth. Either while it's in transit or when it's in the natal chart, that's something the person has to, has to reckon with. So you'll see through different elements and, and through the different dignities, you know, of course, if they're in different elements or different signs, one will be getting the better of the other. Usually in the fire signs, of course, Venus gets the worst of it. In the air signs, usually you'll see Jupiter gets the worst of it because Venus rules air signs. In the water signs, it's kind of mixed, but usually Venus, just because Venus is best when it's not so emotional, when it's more practical, like Venus does better in the Earth sign in general. But of course, I know Jupiter, Venus is exalted in the water sign, right? Because the exaltation is a, is a wild card and it's exalted in Jupiter's water sign. So again, if we can really connect what pleases us and makes us happy with the heart and with, our, with, with the source of our own mind, which is the moon, then that's a very high state. But often that's not what happens. Instead, we get very emotional and we get a lot of attachment, particularly like emotional attachments to the partner rather than having more discrimination. Because again, especially romantic partnerships, 
they're supposed to be more, we're supposed to be less self, selfish, basically. And we're supposed to have more uh, discrimination about it where there's good boundaries because that's what makes relationships with other equals work well. That's what the Venus lesson is. That it's about equality and it's about flexibility and, and it's about mutual respect, not you're the source of my happiness and when you don't make me happy, I'm so emotional, I'm just crushed. <laughs> right? This is what, this is kind of Venus in the water signs and Jupiter can kind of exacerbate a little bit. And in the Earth signs, definitely Venus gets the best of that, and Jupiter tends to be less, you know, we tend to be less philosophical and more literal. But again, of course, every, every astrology chart is different, and you always have to evaluate those things. But the important things that can be said about the Venus-Jupiter conjunction I'm saying here, it brings together these two energies that both are trying to support happiness and growth and you know, good things. They're both natural benefics and they're both givers. And they give things that are really important. But again, they interrupt and they tend to conflate and confuse both of those issues like all planets do when they're joined. And again, you know, one of the things that you'll see that I hear all the time is it's very easy to just stop being scientific about these things and say, well, Jupiter, Venus, they're both benefics. Good. It's so good. It's good, 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 good and not see the precision here. You know, it can be too much of a good thing. And that's actually what leads to the disappointment, let's say, of Venus. The disappointment of Venus could be that it gives, you know, too much of a good thing, which says, okay, this is the, you know, this is the meaning of my life. And then when it's not, that's when the disappointment comes. Because you'll hear people say, oh, it's going to make for a great relationship and a great partner and da 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 your partner will be great teachers and they'll be that. All that could be true. Yes. Doesn't mean it isn't true. It means, let's say that will happen. And you, let's say if that's in your chart, you would have that. And then even though the partner is the great, the blah da 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 you're still going to be disappointed. <laughs> because it's still not God. It's still not that. So again, you have to think in new. You have to you know, sort of like finish the story to the end and not just have it be a judgment. So I hope this was helpful. <laughs>